Week two brought nothing but action. There was goals galore. There was home upsets of teams winning when they were away from home and everything else was jam packed into this. There was teams who won games for the first times, teams who picked up the first points by getting draws, teams who shocked by not conceding any goals so far, and teams who are still looking for a win. But let's have a look at how those fixtures went. Now the first game of match day two was Minnesota versus Columbus. Now Columbus looked like they were gonna take the victory in all three points there and another one nil victory, but Minnesota popped up in like the last kick of the ball with a goal to tie the game 1-1. Incredible stats, incredible scenes of that game as well for their home opener. Real Salt Lake was stop and start against LAFC, then the game eventually got underway, but LAFC were very upset in their snowball, what we will call that, because that pitch was completely white. Will Lloris could do it in a wet and windy night in Stoke, but he cannot do it in a wet and snowy day in Salt Lake, because Salt Lake won 3-0. Inter Miami, well, where do we even start with this game? Inter Miami versus Orlando, they won 5-0, Suarez found his feet, Messi got two goals and honestly this was just a complete run out. Vancouver versus Charlotte finished 1-1 which is still impressive for Dean Smith to be unbeaten so far and they're looking to add some potential talent with Lille Abada potentially coming in from Celtic for around 8 to 9 million that would be a good signing for them they who only look to get better really. Cincinnati were the first upset away from home as they won 2-1 against Chicago, which we expected but Miles Robinson got his first goal in that game. The other upset was Montreal, Yusef Martinez scored against Dallas, Dallas scored and it was Peter Musa who scored their goal, but they got beat 2-1. Philadelphia against Sporting Kansas, Philadelphia somehow managed to get a late equaliser once again in this game to tie the game one. St. Louis versus New York City is kind of what we expect. St. Louis put on a performance always at home and they're very strong at home. They are the team with a home fortress that I would say. They have the best home record potentially in the last two seasons so far. If you look at last season how well they performed at the start of the season, then now they're continuing that form. But New York City, we expect that from them. <laughs> Speaking of expecting New York City downfall, New York Red Bulls rise as we beat Houston Dynamo 2-1, which is quite impressive at Houston Dynamo as well. After not scoring against Nashville, we then go score two goals. Elias Manuel got a goal and Lewis Morgan picked up a slack pass from Houston. And Houston just looked tired and exhausted. They will be an interesting one to watch the rest of the season. But Lewis Morgan's back on the score sheet, back in the team from his injury from last season and scores an outstanding goal to give Red Bulls a 2-1 victory. Next up is Colorado versus Nashville and that finished 1-1. Nashville were almost the victims of their own downfall as they scored an own goal in the 45th minute to give Colorado the lead. And then Teal Bunbury in the 90th minute scores a penalty, puts that away, gets game 1-1. Nashville pick up two points and two draws from their first two games. Still missing Hanny Mokhtar and Sam Sturridge and some key players in their team, but they will get there soon. Seattle against Austin. Now you'd expect Seattle to walk all over Austin, but this game finished 0-0. LA Galaxy versus San Jose and LA Galaxy won 3-1 in this game. Now, they are going to be dangerous. Someone said in one of their, a, com a reply to my comment then that Galaxy won't make the playoffs until 2027. That is completely wrong. LA Galaxy will make the playoffs this season. They're looking strong, looking good. They will click eventually and they'll just be running riot and finish top maybe five in the Western. Portland versus DC was the game we will talk about a bit later, but that one finished 2-2. And Toronto somehow not conceding a goal two games in. Win over New England 1-0. New England still looking for their first victory after losing two games on the Barons. 3-1 to DC, now 1-0 to Toronto. Sean Johnson with two clean sheets is looking to be the MVP of this weekend. Now before we break down our games that we highlighted last week, we're going to show you where Guess the Ball is. Now the games that we would like to highlight from this weekend start off with Real Salt Lake versus LAFC. Now this game took a while to get started, originally it was delayed because of the severe weather warnings, kicked off for a little bit, then delayed again because there apparently was thunder in there, and by the time the game ended the whole pitch was covered in white and they bring out the orange ball. Now this really affected LAFC, as Real Salt Lake capitalised, scored in the 18th minute, the 41st minute, then Christian Arango, ex-LAFC player, scored to come back to haunt them to score in the 45 plus 5 minutes, 3-0 by half time, game's kinda done. LAFC looked to muster a comeback but just couldn't really get it done and then in the 85th minute Real Salt Lake got a player sent off which was quite interesting but it didn't really affect too much of the game, the game was already gone, the spirits were down and Real Salt Lake picked up a really important home victory against LAFC. Now let's break down the stats though. So now we start off with shots, 12 to Real Salt Lake, 16 to LAFC. 6 on target for Real Salt Lake, 6 on target for LAFC. I say this last week and this week now. If teams could just be more clinical in front of goals or get better chances, it completely throws out what happens in a game. Because six shots on target from each team, one team scores three, one team doesn't score any. How is that even possible? But that is what happens in possessions. Real solidly kind of capitalised when the snow and taking the lead early on, they had 60% possession. 
LAFC had 40. One stat I'd like to bring your attention to though is the passes. Real Salt Lake had 419, whereas LAFC had 270. The weather conditions definitely did not suit LAFC's style of play, but it really suited Real Salt Lake and that's why they got the victory 3-0 in this game. Now our next game is of course we have to talk about this. One, it was a derby and two, it finished 5-0. There's absolutely no way we could not talk about this game and this was Inner Miami versus Orlando. This game started fast and furious with Suarez scoring in the fourth minute by getting his brace in the 11th minute. Then Robert Taylor putting Inner Miami 3-0 up in the 20th, 9th minute. Halftime could not come quick enough for Orlando at that time. They looked to count like strike back, they bring their stars player on, Muriel from Atla Atalanta. Looked to bounce back pretty strongly, they got a goal right after halftime, about 46 minutes, maybe 45 and seconds, minute. But it ruled out so that didn't count for them. Then Messi scores in the 57th minute, which might have been perhaps the randomest goal that Jordi Alba almost scored. It was then cleared, hit off the crossbar, bounced back to Messi, Messi takes a touch on his like chest, doesn't strike the ball, players come flying, the goals are getting tipped and the ball trickles into the back of the net which gives it 4-0, and then Messi puts the game to bed. 62nd minute makes it 5-0. Orlando couldn't muster nothing. They were just all out of sorts. Inter Miami hitting their stride now, three games in. Suarez turning up, you know, which is quite interesting. It's a worry for the rest of the teams. Orlando's meant to be really good defensively, but they just not hit the heights this time. I'm sure there'll be more to come from Orlando in the coming games, but Inter Miami doing that is quite dangerous, you know. Let's break down the stats, though. Was the stats as dominant as I'm making it seem? 11 shots to Inter Miami, 9 to Orlando, so they did have chances and they did have the ball in the back of the net. It was just ruled out offside. I think it would have been much more exciting if they just kind of went, you know what, have that goal, it's 3-1, let's see what you can do. Can you muster a comeback? Because that's the right response just after half time. It didn't happen though, they ruled it out. Fair is fair, I guess, it's got to be how the rules are, but you know, it would have been exciting. Shots on target, 6 to Inter Miami, 3 to Orlando. So even with the shots on target, every shot went in which almost did happen with Inter Miami. They scored five goals at six on target. Quite impressive, really. You can't argue with that, can you? That's very clinical. That's what I was just saying before. If the team's clinical, has better chances. It's six. Uh, it's five goals out of six shots. That's, that's what happens. Orlando had three attempts on goal. Drake Callender pulled off great saves. Just was very strong in goals. Not really getting through him. He's kept a clean sheet. Once again, he has two clean sheets in three games. He's rivaling Sean Johnson there, which is quite interesting to see who will be the battle of the goalkeepers this season. They're looking strong contenders so far. Possession, though, Orlando did have more of the possession, but Inter Miami were just more deadly with it, more clinical, and better uses of the possession. Inter Miami had 47% possession, Orlando had 53%. Passes, I don't really throw this in here as much, but I am mean, focusing on passes so much here right now. But Inter Miami had 461 passes, where Orlando had 481 passes. Sorry, not even 80, 91 passes. 10, like 30 more passes in it in Miami, but got beat 5-0. Probably those extra passes came from taking centers so many times. Like you take maybe, well, think about it, five centers is five passes. You pass the ball to someone else, then pass it to someone else. Maybe you're taking three passes from a kickoff. That's 15. I'm just saying it kind of adds up in there. And that makes sense why they're having so much ball, like ball possession and ball passes. Now the final game that I want to pinpoint is Portland versus DC. Again, a gunner thriller that we could not not talk about, if that makes sense. We had to talk about this game. Portland won 4-1 in their opening game, DC won 3-1. What's going to happen in this game? 2-2 draw. Outstanding. That's what you want if you're a neutral. It's action, there's goals, everything happens, everything combines nicely. In the 18th minute, Portland took the lead. In the 61st minute, Portland add their lead, 2-0. Then Matthias Click pops up in the 72nd minute with a penalty, 2-1. Game on, game on, comebacks there. Can DC do it? Of course he did, I already told you the game finished 2-1. 82nd minute, Christian Fletcher pops up, 2-2, two, two, the game finished. Now this is without DC's leading man, Benteke. He did not travel, he did not play in the game. It would have been if he did play in this game. After a hat-trick he scored and hit in fine form, he didn't play in this game. Didn't really travel well, but DC still picked up the point, which is what I was interested in from last week's video to see if they actually do travel well. And they've done more than well, done actually standard. If you don't, if you can pick up points away from home, that's what you want. It's really good, push on good course to be a building better season than what you have in the last couple of seasons, DC. You're on the right track, in my opinion. Back to this game, though. How did it happen? 10 shots to Portland, 12 to DC. Three shots on target for Portland, that's correct, three, and they scored two. How many shots on target did DC have? Was it two? Was it one? Was it four? Was it five? No, it was eight. Eight shots on target and they only scored two. They had chances and if Ben Teke was there to put those chances away, this game could have been five, six, four, two maybe. Portland really only could have scored two, four, three goals on target. 
like three shots on target. Maximum could have scored three goals from that. DC could have scored eight. Imagine an eight three if Ben Tegi was there. And he would run away with a like golden boot. But now Suarez is in contention again. So we gotta be <laughs> careful about that one. That he's stepped up his game. Messi's also in contention again. Two goals, he's got a couple assists as well. It's gonna be very hard to pinpoint who actually will be the golden boot. So maybe like game five or something like that when teams actually start to settle and push away from it. Position stats 40 to Portland, 60 to DC. DC actually traveled really well in this game and dominated every aspect of it. If they could get Ben Teke or just Thunder Striker could fill his boots, even though they did score two goals, maybe tie them back a little bit and away from home. It's gonna be a danger and a threat to watch. But me as a Red Bull, I look forward to their Atlantic Cup challenge because I feel like we're in great form. I wanna talk about Lewis Morgan, Elias Manuel, but they will do something that will bring it into the game of the highlight week that I will ping them up next time. But be sure to drop your questions down below and get involved in our guess where the ball is. We post the answers on our socials and the community page. So be sure to subscribe so you never miss that. But for now, embrace the excitement.